Hey, good morning. I would like to talk to you about direct shear testing of geosynthetics. This is covered under two uh, ASTM standards, D5321 and uh, D6243. Uh, 6243 is for geosynthetic clay liners. Uh, this test is a performance test. It models uh, site-specific or field conditions. Uh, we're looking at either the mid-plane or the interface shear resistance of geosynthetics or soils with geosynthetics. Uh, basically, you're developing a more Coulomb plot to uh, determine a friction angle. We'd like to go through uh, several pieces of equipment with you and uh, demonstrate how this test works. Uh, what you're seeing in uh, the first schematic is a cross section of the, uh, the device. These devices, uh, one is here. Uh, basically what you're looking at, it's easiest to show you on a uh, small sample like this. This is the loading platen, and uh, as you see in the slides, there are two half boxes. And these boxes are slid over top of one another at different normal pressures. The normal pressure is applied in several different ways. Uh, the device is an adaptation from the soils uh, box. Uh, the box that's recommended is not a small soil box, uh, 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter, but uh, typically the box is uh, 300 millimeter by 300 millimeter. This is the upper box and that is the lower box. Uh, different gripping configurations for this, which we will uh, describe to you. Uh, a bunch of different manufacturers, you see the slide in front of you. Uh, different manufacturers have different take on this equipment, but all three are, have a, a loading mechanism, a, uh, a way to develop shear at a constant rate, and then subsequently to that measuring the shear strength and deflection. A uh, key element to this is a uh, linear bearings or uh, a frictionless uh, surface on the underside. In addition to that, you'll need an internal reference material. The internal reference material, which we use at uh, GSI, happens to be a needle punch non woven textile with a uh, smooth um, HDPE GM membrane. And uh, we can do this dry at a known normal pressure and get a, pretty, a very repeatable uh, result. As far as the normal pressure is concerned, there are four different ways in which you can establish a normal pressure. Dead load, which is pretty obvious, um, that's just off of weights on the, uh, the specimen. The next is with weights on a rocker arm. And here you see that configuration. You would apply a, a load through this rocker arm to uh, you know, get your normal pressure. The mechanical advantage will allow you to go much higher in normal pressure. The next mechanism that you can use are uh, pneumatic bladders, and here you can see the bladder which is associated with it. Uh, the bladder can probably go up to uh, 80 PSI. I've seen uh, some laboratories as much as 100 PSI, but uh, you control with a uh, pressure gauge or a uh, pressure transducer. The last for very heavy loads is, and you'll see a picture of this in the slide, is a, a dual piston cage, which is uh, off of uh, big or hydraulic uh, pistons. You have to verify this normal pressure, and that's typically done with load cells. We often use this uh, flexi force. There's a little bit of a button here, and this is a verification of the uh, normal pressure. Please realize you have to do that in both dry and saturated conditions and through the entire cross-section, which you see in the photograph. As far as measuring the shear strength, um, these two configurations here are S-type load cells. You see that here. Uh, obviously, it needs to be uh, taken account of any friction which is in the device, but this S-type configuration is tracked right into the computer. You see it over in this uh, port long ear device. This is the S-type load cell, which is uh, located right here, down here. As far as displacement, this is, uh, as the slide shows, this is most often done with an LBDT. 
and uh, it's easiest to see on this device here we have about three to four inches of movement which uh, occurs over this uh, 12 inch box or a 300 millimeter box we have about a hundred millimeters of movement and this LVDT records that and puts it right into the uh, computer as far as the clamping is concerned you'll see this picture there are three types of uh, clamping which uh, or gripping which are, are used and it's easiest to show it here on this device the bottom material can have a, a front clamp associated with it can have side um, clamps associated with it and a very high frictional interface at the bottom this would be used uh, particularly for GCLs GSI has a, um, a procedure on that but that's how you would grip obviously the gripping can interfere with the shearing and uh, it's prescribed per manufacturer based on their equipment for very extreme cases with gripping sometimes you'll, you'll see this cross section sometimes you'll do a wraparound configuration but you have to keep into uh, consideration the area correction there is quite a bit of soils preparation with this and I've uh, brought that if soils are used um, you'll need a, a lot of soil uh, mechanics work and a verification of the soils if you're using uh, sands or uh, granular material you'll typically do that through vibration compaction if you're using a uh, cohesive material you'll do either standard or modified proctor uh, for it uh, most people we, we see is a, a standard proctor of about 95 percent which is required there is a verification of the uh, the condition after the test and the way you typically do that is with a, a small tube like this you'll see the slide of it you'll take a sample and um, knowing the, um, the the volume of the sample you can back out the density and uh, moisture content with a drying oven also you can use either a, a pocket penetrometer or a, a vein shear apparatus to uh, determine uh, the shear strength of the material if uh, need be from a rudimentary uh, or verification perspective. All used in geotechnical engineering and certainly used with this device afterwards to uh, verify um, the, the soil. You sometimes will have to uh, characterize the materials used. The most important one seems to be asperity height and uh, here you're using a, a depth gauge, as you see in the picture, uh, to verify the different uh, texturing uh, or the asperity height of the uh, material. Okay, as far as setup is concerned, the uh, bottom tray is typically much longer than 300 millimeters or one foot. And this is a bad configuration because the soil on the bottom, as the normal pressure is applied, would balloon up. So in this particular case, you'd be much better off having the geosynthetic on a rigid plate uh, below the sample and then subsequently uh, having the soil in the upper box traveling, traveling along. What you'd like to develop is a, a series of shear strength versus displacement plots. You will uh, shear this at different normal pressures. And here you see uh, the three different normal pressures will give you uh, different responses in regards to uh, shear strength versus displacement. Uh, you will get a peak and then a subsequent uh, run out or residual value. The peak should be uh, rather pronounced. This is an idealized curve for the raw data and uh, what you see in the next picture are actual curves. Uh, sometimes the peak is quite pronounced, other times it's very gradual. From these uh, th at least three different uh, shear strength versus normal pressure plots, you'd like to develop a more Coulomb failure envelope. Here you see the two envelopes, one for peak and the other for residual or uh, post-peak uh, response. It's, in some cases, this is not a true uh, residual, but uh, you uh, move the device as long as you can and uh, 
get the best result you can. It's sometimes referred to as a post-peak, uh, more cool on the envelope. Here you see actual uh, diagrams from interpreting the data. You have a white paper by GRI, which is white paper number 11, which uh, gives you a response. In addition to that, you have ASTM D7702, which uh, shows you how to interpret the uh, shear strength versus deflection plots into uh, more Coulomb plots. Okay, we're demonstrating ASTM D5321, direct shear of uh, geosynthetics. And in this case, we're doing an interface shear between a geomembrane, which is in the bottom box. You see it's clamped over here in the bottom box, and also it has a very high uh, friction on the bottom of it. So it's uh, both clamped in the front and then a uh, very high friction uh, underneath it. We'll then place the upper box, which will uh, be hooked up to the, uh, the shear, and then uh, use a needle punch non-woven geotextile on the top, which will be inside the top box. The normal pressure will uh, go through this platen, and on this particular device, it, the normal pressure is uh, off of a rocker arm. So we uh, place the rocker arm in place, and then subsequently place uh, mass on the rocker arm. The mechanical advantage for this uh, device is 10 to 1. So we're placing mass on top of it, and that's applying a normal pressure uh, through this uh, platen. You will have to uh, gap um, the two boxes. That's typically done based on the particle size of the soil. In this particular case, we have no particle size, so we have a very minimal gap that's associated with this, so you're not having friction imparted uh, by the, the block itself. So uh, very little. Uh, the no, uh, deflection is me measured with this LVDT and the shear strength with the uh, S-type load cell. It's all uh, on the computer and uh, the data acquisition system will monitor this through the course of the test. As far as the, uh, the rate, it's uh, typically uh, 0.4 inches per minute for geosynthetic to geosynthetic. This all can be controlled with this gearing configuration on this uh, Wickham Ferrance box. Uh, we typically set it in gear and then it's ready to roll. You can saturate this. In this particular uh, example, this demonstration, we're just uh, running it dry. So uh, we're ready to start the test and the test is started by turning on the device and then uh, moving it. You will see this plot with respect to time. Okay, you can see the normal pressure off the rocker arm close up, the uh, shear strength off the S-type load cell, and then the F uh, LVDT for displacement. You can see that all close up. Uh, please realize there's no consolidation, no saturation, there's no soil, it's geosynthetic to geosynthetic. We're running it at the default speed of five millimeters per minute. The soil default speed is one millimeter per minute. Uh, this is a very fast rate. You can see a pronounced peak and then a little bit of a drop off and the dashed line gives you an indication of the residual. I should bring out to you that there's a lot of databases that are available for direct shear testing. One of the largest ones is uh, GRI report number 30. Here you see a database for um, peak shear strength of textured HDPE against the needle punch non-woven uh, material and uh, the response is over 180 points are shown here. Uh, you have an R squared value of 0.95, which is not bad, and you get a uh, peak uh, friction angle. It's, uh, the response is good, and uh, it, it's quite nice to see this uh, response. Uh, these databases, I should caution you though, you need to do site-specific uh, direct shear testing on your conditions. Uh, this uh, database will show you if you're in the right ballpark, but uh, certainly shouldn't be used for the final design. Uh, in addition to the ASTM standard, which is out there, ISO has a uh, direct shear standard, which is ISO 
12,957. It was established in uh, 2002. It has four procedures underneath it, uh, tilt table, ring shear, creep shear, and dynamic shear, which is available to you. There are challenges associated with all this. Obviously, it's a performance test. Um, you have to establish if you're doing mid-plane or interface. The fixity, the clamping, the gripping is uh, critically important. Having that IRM to show that you have repeatable data is significant. Saturation and consolidation is uh, very important, particularly when you're dealing with fine grain materials. Um, that shear rate or the, at which you uh, shear the sample is also very important. You'll go much slower for uh, fat um, clays than you will for a sand or geosynthetic to geosynthetic itself. Obviously, the uh, calibration of the equipment, both the uh, load cell, normal pressure, and uh, LVDT are important, and uh, you need adequate displacement um, you know, to get a uh, residual value. It's a, a pleasure being with you. This is the uh, direct shear.